Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this lovely Friday afternoon. I uh, hope you're well. Um, I am just so enjoying summer here in Portland right now. My, my garden is just exploding, and it's just so much fun to go out there every morning and see what's up, <laughs> see what's blossoming and what new colors are happening, what new little fractals are um, popping out. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, surprises every day. And um, so speaking of surprises, <laughs> well, we have some big announcements today, which you might have heard. We're um, launching year three of monthly pastel painting lessons online, which I'm so proud of and I'm going to talk to you guys about. Uh, I thought uh, I would share this, this afternoon some of my pastel history with you guys. And, because I think it's kind of important, well, really important, to realize that painting is a long-term practice and commitment. And I don't think there are very many painters that arrive at their style without that, that commitment and arrive overnight at their styles. And certainly I didn't. So I thought it would be a good idea to share some of that, some of my uh, background and history with you today. Um, so, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and it's always been such a deep well of goodness and healing and beauty for me, and I love sharing it with you guys. Um, so, without further ado, I thought I would, um, do you guys want to, do you guys want to have me show it up here, or you want to do it down here on the tabletop? Okay. Okay, so some of you guys might know that I, in my, um, long time ago, <laughs> I worked as an illustrator. And um, when I first got out of art school, the kind of prevailing style was really tight, photorealistic rendering. And I did that primarily with acrylics back then, cutting little friskets. And that was kind of pre-computer days, pre-digital. Um, that wasn't as prevalent. So we did all that by hand with an airbrush and a little tiny, like, triple lot you know, brush with like three hairs on it. But then a little bit later on, I began doing a style that was a little bit more whimsical, a little looser. Still, I'll show you what it is. But I did that with Carb Othello pencils. And I did that kind of, that, that style and that work for a number of years. So I really, it was fun. And it kind of got me back into the pastel thing after years of not really um, doing that stuff. So this is kind of a good example of one of those pieces. It's kind of, you know it's, it bigger? yeah, try it yeah, let's try it up here because it, it's a little chaotic there. Uh, so I, I did this little kind of texture with the Carbothello pencils. And a lot of this is drawn from imagination. Obviously, it's not um, realistic style, kind of very, very kind of stylized and whimsical, but kind of fun. And then, let's see, this one I did for um, Lewis and Clark College. This was their Christmas card one year. So, you know, really, really kind of tight rendering, but still kind of, still at the same time kind of stylized. Carbothello pencils. This is Wallace paper that I was using way back then. Uh, let's see, this one was done for a... A children's uh, story magazine, kind of more of an editorial thing. It's kind of fun. And uh, again, that kind of swirly little little texture going on throughout. <laughs> I remember doing these again, Wallace paper, Carbothello pencils. And I, I like this, I like to show this one. I forget what exactly what, this might have been another Christmas card. But uh, I, this is Wallace paper that I toned with, uh, looks like it was probably just a cadmium red. But you see, I did this little thumbnail sketch before I did the final. And so even back then, you know, I'm working things out. Uh, a lot of times when you're working with a client, you have to do a, a comp. We call them comprehensives or maquette. And you'd have to get this approved before you'd go to the finished piece. And I believe that that was the case 
in this with this one. And it's kind of fun that I have some of those some of those things. Um, now this one's really a you know very very tight kind of rendering the fox, and uh, so this is a uh, cans on paper, so it has a really nice soft look to it, and it's the Carbothello pencils. I like this one. I did a couple versions of this, I think. And then this one I, I like because it this is kind of moving towards the landscapes. This was a job I, I painted. I did these of all like I think there were nine Portland bridges that I painted. This is the um, St. John's Bridge. So getting into the the landscape world, you know, kind of tight. You know, very different from how I might approach a landscape these days. So, you know, just I definitely went through this evolution. So that's kind of cool. So then I have a couple examples that are larger pieces of kind of larger pastels. Uh, a couple of them are not in super great shape, and I might have to do some little bit of restoration work, actually, on a couple of these um, because I haven't taken super great care of these. So these are some of the er my early, early landscapes. And you can see there's damage here. Um, but this is cans on paper. And I believe at this time I had primarily Rembrandt pastels. Pretty sure that I didn't have very much else. I might have had some Schmenke, but I definitely wasn't using anything like a Terry Ludwig or Giraud's or anything like that at all. So this was, you know, pretty, this is 1996, looks like. So my kids were little when I did that. And same thing here. This is, uh, um, yeah, this one says 95. So this is even a little bit earlier. And so, again, like really tight. Um, this has some damage to it, but you can see that even, even though um, even though it's damaged, I think you know when it was originally done, the, that texture of the paper came through. This is just black cans on paper, so you can see, you know, we um, definitely incrementally moved to a looser and looser style over time. Um, this is another one, and you know. Um, there's nothing in inherently wrong with this. It still has a kind of nice look to it, but I wouldn't, I definitely would approach this subject a lot differently these days. Um, I like it. Black cans on and pro probably primarily Rembrandt pastels. Okay. And, you know, I did these and I sold a lot of them. You know, obviously these I still, I held on to, but I, I definitely sold a lot of, oh, there's one more illustration that I want. This is from a book that I illustrated. This one's really fun. It's really bright and colorful. And this is on, um, this is a little bit later. I'm not sure what year I did this because I was doing some of this work in tandem or at the same time that I was beginning to paint the landscape. So this is on um, Wallace paper, but I can tell this piece is painted with more than just, it's, it's not just the Carbothello pencils. It's definitely um, soft pastels. Is there just too much real estate to fill? It looks as though, here I can see, oh, I, don't, I didn't remember that. It has a watercolor underpainting, so that's interesting. Okay, cool. I just thought I'd share some of that with you, some of that background history, um, because I, I do think that um, just recognizing that it just takes time, consistency, persistence. And, you know, again, you know, I said this last couple of live streams, I don't say that at all to be discouraging. I actually say it to be more hopeful that you do need to be patient with yourself. You do need to 
put in that, that time and, and dedication to, to get where you want to go as a painter. Um, even, you know, for those of you that maybe have started a little bit late, I still think it's so worth it. I, there's nothing I would rather be doing than drawing and painting. It's such a well of, of calm and joy for me. So I, I just love sharing that with you. And again, you know, I, I do see some organizations out there that are offering stuff that seems like it's that secret secret sauce, that quick fix. And I, and I think that there's little kernels that you can get from those things. I've signed up for some. Um, sometimes I don't even, I sign up for stuff like that that's got a limited time. And I don't even do it because I really... You know, I do like to procrastinate. I like to do things. I've been self-employed for a long time. I like to do things on my own terms, my own time. So um, it's it's hard when there's that that time limitation. So I really like that time to you know take things in, really absorb them, and look at things over and over again. And my philosophy of teaching is that you address the whole of art making the science the the you know we've got uh you know uh the physics of what's going on and the 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 materials and the craft color theory composition drawing and then of course the art that special aha something the, the creativity that definitely you know we want to come in and you know addressing all of that takes time and focus you know, I'm constantly learning um, new ways of approaching my work. I was just, um, actually Kevin and I were talking yesterday that uh, we're working on some new stuff. <laughs> we're actually work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I'm not supposed to say it, but we're working on a drawing workshop right now. And that is very, very interesting because it requires, to me, um, is different kind of focus, a careful observation uh, that painting, honestly, you know, because I've been painting in the kind of looser style over the years, I've kind of, I think I've kind of gotten away with a few things and kind of gotten a little lazy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't paint loose because I love doing that and I'm going to today, but I think that, um, you can get a little you can get a little lazy in terms of like really paying attention to what you're doing and drawing is like get gotten me to get a little bit more laser focused and i'm you know i'm excited about that to bring a little more precision to my painting and the the big paintings that i'm doing for my show the subject matter that i'm doing it definitely requires that of me a little bit more you know, that, that focus. So, um, I, I really think that it's really, um, it's really important. And I think it's really important that one takes that time to, uh, have that kind of introspection about what you're doing. Um, sometimes it's hard to recognize our own bad habits that we've gotten into as painters. And I think a good mentor <laughs> like myself, it can be a really great help in understanding, um, what's kind of holding you back from growing more. And um, that's one of the advantages of working with someone over time. And that's one of the big things that I'm really proud of with monthly pastel painting lessons online because I think that um, it per really provides that. It's my flagship product, which is now in its third year of production. Well, we just finished our third year of production um, and the subscription, you'll have that kind of consistency and persistent learning over time. Um, as long as you, you're a subscriber, this is, the, the I think, the best thing about the subscription, is as long as you are a subscriber, you maintain access to everything. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as you um, as as stay, have an active um, subscription. So that's that's really cool. And this year, our members get twice the content that they did before. 
and that's all. It's a super, super affordable price, and it's never been a better time to sign up than right now. The sale goes on through the summer, and then we'll have to raise the price. Um, so for a limited time, it's on sale. And so if you use the coupon code that's in the description, it's WOOHOO3, you get $37 off any order. Um, sorry, this doesn't apply to the renewals, but you can either pay monthly, which is $39.99 a month, which is such a great price, because I'm gonna show you what you get for just one month. It, just one month, you get the lessons from, you get three lessons from year one, so that's, this is just an example. Okay, so you're gonna get three lessons. This is each like an hour lesson from year one. You get, and this is just in one month. You get three from year two. And then you get three from year three. Plus you get last year's recorded super stream lesson. And then you get this year's super stream lesson, which we actually did just yesterday for the, our, our members. So it's a whole ton, and this is just one month. And then you also get, in for one month, you get the PDFs. Okay, oh, you, wanna go, you, went, you went overhead? Okay, yeah, for one month you get the, the PDFs, which are really dense, and for the when you when you sign up you get the bonus session on nocturnes in addition to that so the first the first month you actually get well, even way more so it's a ton of stuff it's um it's just uh, uh it'll keep you really busy pastel painting and so um each session focuses on a topic either a fundamental a painting or a painting subject and includes, so each one of these lessons is a step-by-step -step demonstration, usually about an hour or so, and the study guide. You get access, yeah, you get access to hundreds of pages, and one of, one of our students um, uh, added it all up, and he said it's over 900 pages. It's gonna be even more now, and he said that it's the pastel Bible, so thanks, thanks, David. And so it's well over 200 hours of video for your fir in your first 12 months as a subscriber member. Okay, that's a whole lot. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk about, I just wanna make sure I'm covering everything. Oh yeah, and this year we're at, we added, um, so I added something even more to this each month. I added a wrap up session lesson, so that's, a lesson, an additional lesson that takes the topic. So la last month we did clouds. The other day I did chickens and ducks wrap up session. And so I kind of do a recap of everything that I kind of feel about all the lessons, kind of my own personal takeaways, what I think that you might, how you might move forward with the subject matter. And then I did an actual another lesson that kind of encompassed, tried to pull everything together and kind of put a bow on the whole session. So that's happening now. So I'm really glad to be doing that because it really lets, gives me a chance to like really um, give you my impression of the topic and what to do, what to move forward and what I'm doing with it currently and so on and so forth. So it's a whole lot of stuff. So. Um, so when you sign up, it's a total of 14 lessons um, that are each about an hour long. And um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? I, oh, the super streams that we're doing now. Um, so yesterday we did the first one for year three, and we focused on edges yesterday. And so I think it was, I I'm hoping it was really informative for everyone. And the other thing that we're doing, um, a new feature of those super streams, is that we're doing member critiques. So you have the opportunity to upload an image, and I select a couple of the paintings to do a critique. And I think the critiques are really valuable because we're all kind of making the same mistakes, we're all, and we all kind of get into kind of similar habits. And so just addressing what those are, um, 
you know, even if it's not your piece, even if I don't select your piece, I think that the information and the, the critiques are really valuable for everyone to listen to. And I really pride myself on actionable critiques, not just like, oh, that's not working, but um, building on what is working in your piece and then resolving any issues that the piece has and hopefully making a painting that's good great. That's, that's kind of the goal. And uh, it was really fun to do yesterday, so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy that we're doing that. Um, so it's, it's really great. And, um, you know, I just don't hold anything back. And, I, and especially this year, there's, you know, I'm getting older. There's no reason to hold anything back. I, I kind of never did, but um, I don't feel like there's any secrets to this other than, um, you know, what I was just talking about. Um, but um, there, you know, I, I do think it's important for me as a teacher to kind of break down any of the barriers between my, myself and my students. Um, we have a great Facebook group as well. That's another feature of the subscription. And the folks in that Facebook group are so amazing. They're so positive and share their knowledge and information. So if you, if you join, you shouldn't feel timid, timid about uh, posting work, even if you're a beginner, because there are people that are beginners all the way up to professionals that are in the group. And everyone is just so sharing and great. I'm really um, proud of the community that we've grown through that group. So that's another um, thing that is a great resource for you that's ongoing. The other thing I have to mention is that we um, do monthly mileage trainings um, that come each month with your subscription. And those mileage trainings are little exercises just to keep you in the groove that that kind of um, uh, kind of drill down on the topic for the month. This year, we're we're aligning the mileage training topic with the year three's topics, and I think that that's really important. Um, I think we tend to kind of focus on the finished pieces um, when we're painting, and uh, I don't think it's always about that. Uh, and so if you have 15 minutes to work in pastel, the mileage trainings kind of give you some, um, some direction with regards to that. So the mileage trainings are a little pastel exercise, a sketchbook exercise, which I think is um, very, very important, and a creativity cultivator. And to me, that's just you know, just a little reminder to keep that artist eye going and just let yourself be enchanted by the visual field and just by, you know, the gratitude and we got to get up in the morning. So I think that that's, you know, it's helpful to me. Um, it's helpful to me to teach you guys. <laughs> so I think that's really cool. Um, so the, the, the subscription is really meant to help you improve your, your painting skills overall, over time. And um, I'm really excited to uh, be working on year four <laughs> pretty soon. Um, uh, but I, oh, the other, the one last thing I have to mention about the subscription is that I do, I do intend pastel painting, month, the monthly subscription to be kind of your, your go-to for pastel painting, um, to just to keep you in that groove. But um, I'm also offering a uh, a discount, a $15 discount on any other uh, uh, workshop that I have for the monthly subscribers because I know there's sometimes you want to like really focus in in detail on a particular subject matter. So uh, I want to give my monthly subscribers all the goodies, all the perks, and there is a money back, a 30 day money back guarantee. I really want you to be happy with the subscription. I do think it's awesome. I don't think there's anything out there like it right now. And I also think that um, there, there, um, if you're a fan of mine um, and you want to support these, the, the free live streams that we do every week, the best way to do that is to become a monthly subscriber, honestly. And um, 
Yeah. And one, one other thing I like to mention to people, because it is kind of overwhelming. It's a ton of content, right? It's a ton. And you could get in there and you could be like a little overwhelmed. Um, but um, I, I think that you can, you can just take it step by step and it's, it's, you know, you don't have to be overwhelmed and you don't, there's no competition. There's no need to get in there and do it all at once. It can be something that you can rely on and count on to help you in your painting over time. And again, I do, I do think it is a pretty amazing value. And I don't think over 30 years or so of being an art teacher that um, I found any better way for me to, to teach. Um, I think it's better even than an in-person workshop. I know it's great to meet people in person, and I love to do that. And you know, we'll, I'll be doing some of that um, in the in the coming year, or probably more next year. But um, the great thing about the the subscription is that you get to connect over time with myself and the other students. Because when I teach a two or three or four or even a week workshop, you know, you work with someone, and then after it's done, it's bye bye, and you kind of never hear from them again, maybe very, very occasionally. But I really mean this to provide a lifetime foundation for a pastel painting study. So again, if you're a fan, go over to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check it out. And we are hard at work already on year four. So it's really, really, really cool. And we are also taking some... Um, advice or um, uh, requests for topics for year four. So chime in, you guys, um, whenever you like. All right, so that is it for my, my little intro and telling you about what we've got going on. And today we're going to do some painting. I love this reference photo. So let me get this stuff out of the way so I can grab my pastels. So we'll see. Thanks, Kevin. Da, 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 there they go. Lots of stuff. All righty. So love this river scene. This is something I've been wanting to paint for a really long time, so I'm happy to be doing it. I just love the kind of neutrals of the tree trunks and the branches. You guys know I'm always, I love that kind of tangle of stuff to paint. It can be kind of confusing. So when I start my initial drawing, um, it may feel like uh, hard to parse out. But as I go along, I think I'll be able to get it. I also love this little bit of, it looks like some berries in the foreground. And I think that that's really neat. And I love the color of the water. Now, one thing that I am recognizing in my own painting lately is that I feel like overall um, I get a little too dark. So this dark area in the foreground here, below the, in, next to the tree trunks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can't keep that from getting too, too, too dark. We'll see. Um, I might, I'm going to need it to be a little on the dark side just to give, give me enough contrast. But I'm going to try to ease up on it. I'm going to try to resist the temptation of using those Terry Ludwigs down there right away at least. All right. I might get to them eventually, but I'm going to avoid them a little bit. OK, let's see what happens here today. Um, I'm going to just get right into it. A little bit narrower give myself my bounding box, which I always feel like is a good um, key for me. And just looking compositionally, this is pretty close to center. But I'm, you know, so if I'm thinking here, I'm thinking I'm going to move it over just a little bit to start. Just a bit. I think that would be wise. And this one, 
I really like how it, the kind of interaction between these two trunks is cool. This is a little darker here. It's got a little dark shadow side. So I can already start in there. And this guy, just kind of the gesture of them, it's really, really pretty. And then this is coming like that. And then we've got this kind of, this guy. Just indicate some of that. And then this, so this is where this kind of tangle is going on. Some of these are back there in shadow and some of them are in the light and they're doing all kinds of crazy things. And then here's that dark that I'm a little concerned about that I'm going to be tempted to get it too dark. I like this little guy over here arching into the composition. And then up here I've got some foliage. And then here is the river bank up, up in here. I think it's right, right, right about here. And then the top of the tree line, I'll give myself just some indication of where that's sitting. Okay. I think that's enough to kind of get me going. It's all kinds of fun stuff going on. All right. Okay. Now, looking at that, it doesn't probably make much sense to anyone but me, but that's okay, because I'm the one painting it. <laughs> um, and that's the case in for you too. Don't worry about if your sketch it looks like a mess at this stage of the game, it's okay. As long as it makes sense to you and it has some reference points that, that help you out, then you're good. Uh, okay. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get some color and value in for those tree trunks. I think that's where I could start. I could start with the water, but I think I'm going to start with the tree trunks. And to me, they're this sort of soft, purpley gray. There's also some warmth to it because, so. In the little dappled light, cat like little cast shadows on there too. So, um, where should I start? I let's see. It's probably going to be a combination of things, but I'm I think that's maybe not bad. So notice I'm not doing this. I'm not drawing like this. I'm taking my stick and I'm doing this, coming along the edge of the tree trunk and building the edge of the tree trunk like that. So it has a kind of broken softness to it. Come along this guy. Because it's got, I don't know what kind of trees, but it's got some moss growing on, on it. And now up in here, this guy, has a little more green to it. So I'm going to pick something that has a little more green in it. Still light in value. Still building it in that same kind of mode. And then this one, and this one's a little darker. That both of these are a little darker that come across. 
I'm using a look, this is a kind of purpley gray. I kind of see that color in, in there a lot. So right for right now, I'm kind of ignoring the moss. I'll get back to that. Because you can only do one thing at a time. You can, so you got to pick your pick what you're going to do. This has actually got a few little And then can you talk a little bit about why you use blue spruce? <laughs> yeah, in a minute, let me. Um, yesterday during the live, the super stream I did, and, we, and it has, some of it has to do with the edges. Because blue spruce is has it's it's to me like if I were to use charcoal instead, the charcoal just kind of gets muddy with any color that interacts with it. Whereas the blue spruce has some intensity and some you know it's um, it's some hue to it um, that is nice. And if I so you know I want some I want to draw with something that is dark enough for me to see it, but is not. Um, necessarily, um, you know, I, I, I don't want it to be muddy. Okay, so now I'm looking for something that I want to use for the cast shadow. I, I like the idea of it being a little on the purple side. Let's see, maybe this is going to be the thing. I just want to, I'm, I'm just testing this out right now, just kind of seeing if this is going to be the uh, work for me. I think it will. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. Now I'm going to move on to get, just kind of get, some other stuff established. I'm kind of feeling to get the distant tree line going. And I want to do that really um, nice, and I want the value of it to be nice and light. But I want some color to it as well. So let me see. I'm thinking that that's a maybe, that's maybe too bright, too intense. So something a little more muted. There we go. I like this. And right in here, this tangle in here, I'm going to come right across it because it's I'll, I'm, I'm painting really thin right now so I can get whatever over the top of it, no problem. Back in here, I kind of see some gray. There's these, even some kind of muted green back there as well. Now, how about this foliage that's over the top? There's some red in there, a little bit of, you know, fall color happening. This must have been some fall during the fall. And I think I'll go ahead and give that, let that have some intensity, at least a little bit. I'm going to go, so pick out a few spots to, bring a little bit of idea of some color in there and that's that's kind of nice. How about that moss? Boy, it's pretty. Let's see. 
it's got a dark side too, but I think I just got lucky and I think picked up something that I think is pretty good right here. Definitely just got lucky. And maybe that this will be okay in here. Right. So I think that's a pretty good start. Um, it, I think it would be good to get, just to orient myself, there, this, this guy is kind of strong. And see how I'm building it? I'm, I'm definitely not doing that. I'm, you know, getting some little dot, dot, dots, dashes, putting some, uh, bringing the, the pastel along that edge like so. And then there's the one here too that I just want to know. It kind of goes into shadow. All right, so how about some of that green on that foliage there? Might be too dark. I'm, I'm in, very intentionally lately trying to lighten up the value of my paintings overall. Now this, this is dark here. I don't want to go too dark. I think I'm going to do this. In here. Just to get a little, little, a little hue in there without, without getting it too dark. Now there's leaves on the ground in the, on the bank there that are a little bit lighter. I really want those. Now what color are they? Um, I'm thinking something like that. Let's see. Is that? Oh yeah, that'll work. I got, I've got some kind of idea of a little bit of green popping in from this side. I can, I can always go darker, right? That's the thing. Um, okay, I think that's nice. Pretty good. Um, and now, now I'm at that great point where I get to put some water in. Oh, I might, I might want to get, there's a couple of dark limbs in here that I just want to indicate. So um, you mentioned earlier that you were painting too dark. Yeah. Um, just, why do you want to lighten up? Um, why do you feel that? I, I just think that it would look good. I think it, you know, I, I just, 
I, I want my paintings to have a a, a, an, a lightness and airiness that um, sometimes I don't think I, I get. I, I want them to be happier. <laughs> I want happy. I want happy paintings. I want to be. I want to be like Bob. I want, no, honestly, I do. I want. <laughs> I want happy paintings. <laughs> I know that's maybe silly, but it's true. I mean, that is the reason. I think you know. I want. I'm just getting a few more of these darker limbs in, just to orient myself. Before I put the water in. Good, I like it. Okay, so now we get to put the water in. That's super fun. Get to go for some um, intense color in there. So I'm you know, looking at this, you know, just comparing like that. That's really, whoo, a lot. Um, that Then there's a, you know, it's darker here and it gradates up. So definitely want to catch that gradation. Um, might be something like this up here. Maybe it might be a combo of colors. So we'll see. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. It's the moment of truth here. I'm actually thinking even something even darker. Let's see. How dark? That's too dark. That might be good. It's got some purple to it also, so that might be nice to get in there. This, this this blue is a good base color. Let's see. I'm just yeah. And then it gets a little lighter as we get up here. Here's a question. Yep. Um, is it more about painting what you see or what you feel or how you want the painting to feel to someone else? So that's a complicated question, which um, I think it really depends on where you're at as a painter. 
And for me, uh, I, you know, I think as you grow, when you're first starting out as a painter, you, it's best to rely on what you see. And, but as you're learning, there's stuff that you begin to know. And then there's also, to me, there's a hierarchy there. So there's, for me, as a painter, there's stuff that I see, stuff that I know, stuff that I want. When you're a beginning painter, it's really mostly the stuff that you see. You rely on that. And then as you gain a little more knowledge, you can integrate the stuff that you see with the stuff that you know. Because you might not know what you want when you're starting out. But later on, as you kind of get that uh, a little bit more experience under your belt, you have a better idea of what you're really going for. You've studied other artists. You've, 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 you've painted enough. You've done some pieces that have maybe little bits of what you want. So then, you know, for me as a painter, yeah, I'm using what I see. But at a certain point, I'm, I'm really like, what is the painting doing? That's what I rely on more than what this is. So at one point or another, you can almost let go of the reference and you begin just painting, um, wor working with the painting. And th so there's a definite hierarchy there um, that I think shifts and changes with your experience and um, with, with time, if that makes sense. So this is the reflection of the bank. And it's a little greener. Let's see. I've got this kind of green gray. Because when you're starting out, you don't even, you know, you know, you have that beginner's mind. You don't, <laughs> you, you know, you don't even know that you're not doing it right. <laughs> A lot of times, I know I didn't. I'm like, oh, I think this is great, and I'm like, really, no, not so much. And you have to get, um, you have to learn stuff to know what you don't know. Okay, that's looking good. I love this little, these little. Um, and now I am feeling like this does need to go a little bit darker. I knew I would feel that way about it. So I am going to make it a little bit darker, but I'm going to be careful about it. Not let it, I don't want it to overtake my, my, my scene. what I want it to do.
Okay. All right, now I feel good. Um, uh, however, I want to get that sky in because that's going to really kind of pull it together and tell me, give me a lot more information. Before that, I'm going to I'm going to get a little more oomph with these this green here because I think it would be nice. Some a um, little bit darker on that cast shadows. And I, you know, this is good. I'm sneaking up on the darks a little bit more, and that's, you know, I think that's the way to go. It's, I, I, overall, I think it's better to kind of start more, more or less in the middle. And sneak up on the darks. And the lights, because I haven't hit the light lights, and I haven't hit too much of the dark darks yet. I'm, I'm, I think it's in, I'm in good shape. All right, let's. Uh, let's get some sky in there. I think that's going to pull things together nicely. So um, Marla, on the right side of the painting, mm -hmm. um, you've cropped the, the photograph. Um, so there's a little patch of lake on the right side of the photo. Did, did you crop that lake out a little bit or your bounding box? Do you see what I mean? No, in, in the photo that I have in my hand, that's not the case. Oh, okay, so so the photo that's on online is is it might. uncropped. Yeah, it might be. So yeah. you've cropped out that lake on the right side. I might, and, and I think that's fine. I wouldn't want a little teeny bit over here of it anyway. I don't think that would be probably very good. I'm going to get just some of this color on these trees because it's fun. Yeah, I'm um, not, you know, I'm not ever trying to do exactly what's in the photo. And I'm going to often crop to um, to make sure I'm getting the, the, the best composition if I can <laughs> as much as I as I can just I'm just grabbing some of these little textures and things. It's fun. And I, you see, I don't need a whole lot of it to really say it. It's, you know, it reads, they read like that. Dots and dashes, a little shorthand for that texture. get whatever kind of trees they are. Maybe some darks up here in the foliage. This is a brown, nice dark brown. I just want to get this kind of rolling a little bit because I'm going to knit the sky in and around that. Now to me, um, it, it probably doesn't look like very much to you guys. To me, it's like good. It's at a good spot. I'm middle, middle, middle values, lots of middle values. I haven't got too many darks. I haven't got too many light lights either. So I'm going to have plenty of opportunity to like really go for those, um, the lights and the darks 
And anything else that I, you know, thinking I want to do. So that's good. Get a little more heft on this guy here. All right, let's get some sky in. And I, it's really, really light up here. Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, do you apply what you know of color theories as you paint, or is it about exaggerating the color that you see? Well, that's, um, I don't understand the question. OK, here's another one. Um, you have a lot of small, short stick pieces, great for getting in between things. Did these shapes evolve from use, or do you ever break new ones? Uh, unison, Sinoliae, uh, do you ever break them into shapes that you would need? I don't break stuff into shapes. I might break stuff in half, um, and I might, um, sometimes I want to put things in a, a, a smaller box, so I might do that, but I don't. Bur I don't intentionally make things into shapes. What I'm really doing is I'm picking up a stick and then I'm making it do what I want it to do. I'm not picking up that stick. I'm picking up the stick because of its color or because of it it's um, it might be the right um, uh, softness or hardness. Now here see this? This is the blue spruce. See what I'm doing? I just made this soft kind of edge there. And why did I do that? Because there are these kind of wispy branches back there. That I want to hint at. And the blue spruce is perfect. See that? Right there. I get to say those branches without really drawing them. That's why I love the blue spruce. <laughs> it's really, it's where it's at for me. Do it again. I'm going to do it here. So when I come in with this almost white, it's going to pick up a teeny bit of that color. You know, when you stare at edges, you know, there's a vibration of color that's happening. It's really fascinating, and you know, I want that in my paintings. I want them to be shimmering with color. And energy and light, and you know, that's what we're painting more than a thing.
Oops, that was the that wasn't the right thing. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm not really looking at this so much as looking at what, you know, I'm not trying to get this exact. There's no way I could. What I am doing is looking at what is the character of what's happening there. And I'm trying to do a little sort of shorthand of what that character is. All right, cool, now I'm in really good shape because I haven't put the light lights on the trees. I haven't put some of the foliage on top. I haven't done the lights in these branches and I have pl plenty of tooth left to do it. So that's really cool. I'm in really good shape. And now I can, now I can really start painting now. <laughs> All right, let's get some light lights on here. Um, it's fun. Okay. I think I'm going to go for this kind of warmer thing. Oh, I also see that this needs a little bit like that. Okay. So... Again, I'm not trying to get this exact. Not really going to be able to do that. I'm more looking for what's the character. What kind of marks are going to help me describe the texture? and the edges and the color. Shift over to... And there's a few little little drawing things to play with. There's this this guy. And will you um emphasize that lighter value shoreline that's in the distance? Uh, probably. But I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to overdo that. It's not, yeah, I, I'm going to put something in there. I'm not going to overdo that because I don't want it, I'm, I don't want it to pop forward too much.
there's some discussion on the chat, and um, someone quoted, uh, quote, value does all the work and color gets all the glory by Richard Schmidt. Yeah, and Richard McKinley says that too. Yeah. Yeah. That is very true. This, um, yeah. Yeah, this piece has some great value going on as well. Great colors too. It's always a dance there. But that's fun. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I should have, no, that's okay. I have my um, Giro's that are in that set. I didn't have them out. See, that's the thing about having separate sets. I don't like that. to get it. I know there's something in there that I want. So what is it that the Giraud's do for you that the other pastels cannot? Well, I knew this This has, the, it's the, in this one it's the color and it's also a little hard. Um, so it, I knew exactly what it would do. And I had it, so I want it. And so I, you know, just had to get off my butt and move and go get it. <laughs> Which uh, something, Sometimes, you know, you just get lazy, like, oh, yeah. I get lazy. And why do you keep these rows separate? Um, I just haven't put them in the set yet. I just haven't, I, I, I recently acquired them um, from a former student who's gotten older and gave them to me, um, yeah, which was very, very nice. Um, she knew I would like them. Um, and I just have, I haven't quite decided how I'm, what I'm going to do with them. So no, no, nothing startling, or no, no real good reason, honestly. Okay, let's ad address a couple things here. Um, and I think I'm getting, getting there on this. Let's get that bank, because I do think it does need to have um, something back there. Um, uh, there looks like there is even a boat right there. I'm, I'm thinking maybe this, this is probably about the right, uh, see, even that, it's not, want. Oh, 
I want a real soft edge there. Um, I do see some little bit of color back in here. There's also some uprights. You know, I wouldn't want to come along with just a line there because I don't think that that's um, effective. Okay, um, I want to put some lighter bits on that foliage, and then I think I'm going to call it good for now. Let's see. Are you, um, are you familiar with Roche brand? Yeah. Um, okay, so are, are Roche... Is Roche soft or medium compared to other pastels? You know, I think Roche are, um, I think they're kind of medium, I believe. I mean, I think they're somewhat, to me, some, they're somewhat similar to Unison, the ones that I've bought. I got to say, I, I, you know, I bought some because I was so, you know, you, you can't help but be intrigued by them. They're so expensive. Um, you know, they're really nice pastels, but are they worth it? I don't know. Um, I don't, personally, I don't buy them. I just don't. So this would be, you know, if I if I had another um, thirty minutes on this to like really like go in here and play around with some of these shapes and pick out some fun um, branches and such and you know that that's the kind of thing you know I I would I would do. Let's see, I'm I'm, I'm missing um, one little. The one little opportunity here. Um, this this kind of comes across here like this, and I missed that. Kind of like to get that. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, so, you know, I definitely um, think that they're really nice pastels, but I guess I have my limits <laughs> on what I'm going to spend. So. There's some stuff in here I kind of would be fun to get. 
haven't quite gotten there yet, but I'd have to play around with it. I also think one more thing, and then I'm going to stop fussing with it for a little bit. I like it, and I feel like it's pretty nice and loose. I feel like this is a little dark back here. That's nice, that's good. And oh yeah, much better, okay. So that's the kind of like assessments that's really important to be able to make. You know, okay, is that that really helped a lot? And there's you know a few other little things to do. And we'll crop it and take a look at it with the Okay, yeah, we will. With the frame whenever you're ready. It's fun. I mean it's it's got some nice little sparkle to it and Yeah, I like it. But I definitely snuck up on the value relationships. That was good. Um, okay. Yeah, let's take a look at it with the, the coppers. All right, here we go. Uh, I need to work on that right there. That one, this 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 branch right there step needs to. A little bit kind of yeah, I will. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. There we go. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's fun. Um, but you know, there are a few little things that would be nice to play with. Um, but you know, like 15, 20 minutes, I think I could get it there really nicely. But um, yeah. Okay, guys, so be sure that you head over to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check things out there. Right now, we're having a sale on the monthly um, sub, um, pastel painting lessons online, and that's gonna, that won't, that'll just last for the summer. So now is a great time to check it out. And um, we'll be back next week with something else. I don't know what, we're, um, what I'm going to paint next week, something... I don't know, maybe I'll do something um, more fun. Maybe I'll do, um, well, this was fun. Maybe I'll do something more playful, I should say. Um, like a, maybe I'll do a chicken or a duck or something like that. Hmm. That would be fun. Okay, all right. Well, I hope you have a lovely weekend, and I hope it's beautiful wherever you are on the globe, and um, uh, get some painting time in this weekend. That would be super cool. I, I definitely intend to. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for um, tuning in. Okay, all right, bye-bye.